Okay. Um, I think I distributed to you the um, new agenda. If so, it would have uh, added to it uh, number <coughs> two, reviewing the final budget. If you don't have that one, Ricky, I don't know if I gave you a revise. I don't think I did. Literally hot off the press of about two hours ago. Everybody has one now? A um, couple things I need to uh, distribute as we go along. I don't see Bruce here. Um, last I spoke with him, um, he was coming. Uh, the, the essence of that item on our agenda, I, and again, I'm not sure, um, having this meeting on this night, uh, we need to change our organizational. It was extremely frustrating today not to uh, have staff here to work through some things. Friday, we were trying to process the results of Thursday night's meeting, and things had to get out and be done, and at the same time, trying to finalize agenda for today. It, was, it, it just it doesn't work. It's, it's too much. Um, but the JCEO portion, um, we're, we're, we've been talking about uh, the program we've had in the past. Um, you, can, uh, you did get the letter. Okay. Did they come to you that way? Printed sideways? Yes, it did. Yes, oh. yeah, everything did. Yeah. The whole packet. The packet. It's all good. And staple. Staple well, the opposite most way, so it makes it. Most everything. <laughs> Oops, I'm not turning it. <laughs> it's all mixed up, though. Okay, we'll make a note of that and see what happens with that study. Um, they have lowered the uh, cost of the program, as uh, I'm going to assume that wasn't cut off, to 18920 um, A lot of discussion about whether it's needed at that site, not necessarily whether it's needed. Um, now, has that time come and gone? Bruce has indicated to me, um, you know, what uh, they do, the service they provide. Basically, what I requested is that he come tonight and convince five people of the same. He had to tell more than just me. Um, and I asked him to make that data-based, um, you know, versus um, opinionated. Uh, I don't have anything uh, other than that really to share. I assume he was going to come and do it. I don't know why he hasn't. Um, again, with the uh, long weekend, it might have also thrown him off. I'll, I'll make the assumption that um, he'll reschedule. To the best of my knowledge, the because I had given this to Diane, uh, the 18-9-20 is in the budget. So that uh, is at least covered at that level. Uh, the other thing we've talked about doing is using the building for other programs. Um, as you know, May Courier is uh, uh, rented extensively for parties, showers, <coughs> and events, birthdays. Uh, Mel really believes the one in Treadwell's Mills would be also. Uh, the other thing I talked to Bruce about is uh, that we would do some remodeling and move the program to the back of the building, put a window in, put a uh, separate door, would kind of um, regain a lot of space uh, in the building and also enable, if we're going to have a program, enable the program to be there and enable the building to be used by the community. So that's another direction uh, we're working on. I, I, I'm optimistic that's uh, where things will go. So we'll have to hear from Bruce. Um, number two is reviewing final budget. Um, uh, Diane um, made some recommendations um, Friday in the 11th hour. Um, I, I gave you a summary sheet of that, um, which I asked her to do. And the summary sheet uh, also has a um, 
summary as uh, we do with the um, tentative and preliminary budgets. And then there's a larger line by line. Um, one of the things I noticed, I'm the one that ran that off this afternoon as I put it in the machine. We're going to talk about that later tonight, a machine that we uh, is due to be replaced. Um, I noticed the margin to the right uh, seems to have cut some of the numbers off. Yeah, and so did it cut on the left too? Cut <coughs> there, on the left as well? Yep, both. Um, I, I think the one on the right has carried to the decimal place, and I'll generalize by saying, you know, there are no pennies yeah, and I, dimes. When, and I through, when I went through, it was, I could tell which one it was. But there's some uh, shading also to the left, so yeah, I don't know, it might be a dirty mm -hmm. cylinder or something. But again, you probably got the gist and it should match line by line at least uh, with the one you have. <coughs> um, the most, uh, the first thing that we, we should do with this is take a look at her summary dated November 5. Um, I don't know offhand what day of the week November 5 was last week, but this was revised Friday afternoon. Uh, and the version you have in front of you is the uh, revised version. Um, and there are some calculation errors and, or typos. Um, and if you've identified those, Tom, I'm going to need to make sure I highlight them to bring that to uh, her attention. Under the, first, the, under the first item, under general fund appropriations, there's miscalculations. Uh, that is not, it doesn't look <coughs> like we left it by any means. Uh, so that's got to be looked at. Um, um, did you put a calculator to the justice? Uh, no, I didn't put a calculator to everything. I didn't have time this afternoon, but I, I did some. Did you do the, you didn't do the justice? Well, I went through page by page, and I had notes that said that we didn't have the justice things in there, and then I see that it was fixed, so I'm assuming that that is correct. But I didn't go by this sheet that you have for the summary. I went by the, uh, the detailed pages. Which, uh, I have a number of pages marked, but at least ask questions about it and want to go through them. Well, I think we need to. That's, uh, that's what we're doing here. The budget has to be passed next Monday. Uh, we want to have it as, as accurate as we can, obviously. And the summary sheet, um, again, uh, we, don't, we don't have the details. I'd have to go back to the line-by-line uh, -line budget to see where those came from. Well, the first one I had was on page uh, 13 of the new part. I did notice that throughout the health calculations had been changed considerably on every on almost every one. You're referring to health insurance? Yeah, the health yeah. insurance. There's I mean no based on what you had in the preliminary versus what 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 you corrected that not by about five thousand. Yeah, in her notes, um, she said health insurance was up 12, but I think she knew that before re retirement up about 18%. Uh, then she notes in 2011. I don't know if that was a uh, typo. She meant to say 12 or if it's over 2011. Um, there were some changes in benefits, which I don't think made the first one. Um, we had a. Yeah, I think that's probably what it was. Yeah, we had a staff person in uh, planning uh, who left. Uh, was a two-person. Now we have uh, whole family. Uh, a family and uh, Trevor, who uh, when he left Friday was pacing. His wife is due to have their first child. And also went to family, so that was a change for 2013. On, on page uh, 13 of the new one that you yep. got. Um, Third one down says data collector. We had uh, preliminary at 28, and that's changed. And I just wondered what that was. 
our, um, we had we had said that um, in order to get all that uh, caught up, I, I, I thought according to um, the uh, rules of the state and everything, we had to have that data collection. Yep. Um, and I noticed I just went down eight, so I just wanted to ask. In, in the tentative budget, what we were proposing to do was uh, what uh, Brian was hoping to have happen was a position. Um, I told Diane we weren't going to add a position. Um, as we've done many times with new things, I said, uh, you know, you're not going to get a data collector to come in there in January, February, with the weather. You can't even tell if the driveway is paved <coughs> in those instances or just naturally covered with snow. Uh, that would be a position that would happen in the spring, so we cut that back okay. uh, because of that as well. The other thing that I said I want to uh, have further conversation, I, I spoke with Brian, um, and I said we don't need to do it now, we can do it after the first of the year, is would we be better off bringing a person in? I don't think so, because we're going to have to pay benefits, or um, we, we had an outside uh, contractor that came in and uh, was paid per uh, uh, property that he went out and gathered data on, and then staff put the information in. Um, I think we would be wiser to catch up using the funds that way versus expanding yeah. staff. Okay. So uh, what I told her is, um, you know, we wanted to cut this, if, if anything, and uh, yeah. we reduced and then, it because of yeah, that. Yeah, and then under contractual services, further down the page, mm -hmm. it goes to 5000 in uh, tentative budget mm -hmm. amount. Um, and I'm wondering what the what that was, was uh, that, that being taken up by the by the um, data collector. Correct. Okay, so originally both were in there, but we're we're decreasing data collector and we're taking that out. When the, when Brian had first presented his budget, he wanted both, um, and we again said, you know, me and end of the day, that's not going to happen. Uh, the other thing we're hoping is that um, Michelle would be able to, she's, she, she knows the job now, that she would have time uh, in her schedule uh, once they come in with some of those cards that she could key punch them in as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And she's now with the uh, planning department. So she'll be doing both. Well, we haven't assigned that, but that's the assumption that, okay. you know, we can stick five on her desk and they'll disappear before the day's over. Just find a way to get it in. There, there are weeks when they're doing their agenda for their meeting. I, I wouldn't expect it, but uh, there are times when uh, you know we're going to hope she can help out and, okay. and reduce it. It, it just seemed way too much money to put in. There. And I'm assuming that uh, Diane recalculated in terms of Social Security and things like this. Correct. That's why those. Well, you know, I'm down. saying I'm saying correct in defense of her because she's the staff person that does it. Um, it's a good assumption. Okay, and page uh, 14, mm -hmm. um, that's where we went from 13 to 20. On the medical insurance. On the medical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with those changes in the addition. And that was the change for, let's see, who was the change for? Just for uh, Trevor and uh, oh, no, Michelle. That's, that's planning. That's planning. This is, this is assessment. <coughs> I'm only, discuss, I'm only discussing the assessing right now. Mm -hmm. if. So, according to this, um, decrease in assessing contractual services, 25,000, decrease in assistant position, 8,000, um, increase in assessing health insurance, 7,000. So that, then I'm going to have to assume that it's, it's the new position, but, but but we're not hiring the new position. So, so we put some money in there for it. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, thank you, Paul. That's yeah. on her cover sheet that that's what she had done because that was still up in the air if it was going to be a part time or not. Okay. So all right. So we're set on that then. She's we calculated that. Okay. Yep. All right. I just wanted to check. Uh, well. And, and, and again, the, the, those are the questions, the, the conversation is still going on. She's trying to put sufficient funds that would cover, you know, whichever direction it goes. But in the 11th hour, I said the direction it won't go is 
a new full-time position that starts in January. Yeah, okay. And then um, page 17 of the new one. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, tentative with 6-8, and now it's uh, preliminary is 10, or this is the uh, town attorney, I guess. So what changed on that one? I'm looking for the line you're referencing. Um, I'm looking at hospital medical insurance. <coughs> the last line down. Okay. Yeah. We had we had an attentive amount, and I understand that uh, some recalculations had to be made. I just wonder how come it was up so much. I'm I'm going to guess the deputy town attorney got moved into that same ah okay page, so his insurance got moved to that. All right, that's what it was. I that's right. We, uh, we, we, yeah, we, we consolidated from, from out of the other section. Correct. Okay. All right. And, and again, that I, I believe that's the answer, and it's uh, a pretty good response, but I'm making note as well. I'd have to pull my original binder back in to see if we made notes there, too. What if we go down to page 18, mm -hmm. where it says extra help, and we've had extra help <clears throat> every year, and then it, it, there's nothing there. Was there a mistake that it... That there's nothing there because when we talked about it, there was a tentative of 29 and we reduced it to 15,000. Um, now there's nothing there. I, I'm, so I want to know, um, um, did, did that, was that eliminated by Diane? It was my decision that we didn't have a full-time floater next year. Uh, okay, so there was no money for any, for part-time or full-time Not at that uh, level, no. Okay, because when we had a, when we had the budget session, we agreed to drop it mm -hmm. from 29 to 15. Uh, I think it was for part time. Yep, I dropped it to zero. Well, I don't agree because we had quite a bit of work that that person did mm -hmm. when we had people out and we saved a lot in overtime. In, in the last <coughs> few weeks before Michelle went over to Tambor's position, we were in good shape um, and and really felt confident that we could do that. The place where I think there's a problem, and I think we'll have to figure it out in-house, is, I mean, if Deborah's out for a day, it's not an issue. If she takes a week vacation, which she's more than entitled to, becomes ill or whatever, there's a problem. Somebody has to be there. Most of the time, we've been leaving the doors open across the hall, the budget office picks up the calls, and you know, they can direct them and manage it. Uh, there are other things she does in her, her job that they can't do. Uh, it either doesn't get done, I do it, or help. Um, rather than build a position in, we really wanted to uh, try it the other way. Um, Michelle is... I, I, I didn't understand this was building a position. But didn't we have a part-time person? That we did. Voted, I cut voted it. Between all the offices we did. and handled all of them? We did. We cut it. And the person that did that is still here, who now has knowledge of all the offices. Uh, so we might be able to use her, put a little pressure on her on their department, but we'll find out. Okay. What I don't want to do, and, and we'll see, you know, a, a year from now we'll know, maybe we'll know sooner. Um, what I don't want to do is get a situation where we bring a temp person in, which is why I went with the flow. Yeah, well, that's, that was, that's what caused us a lot of problems before. And you don't get the service. Um, but some other money, things... We don't get, yeah. they don't but know what they're but doing. other things have changed in-house where I'm feeling more confident we can fill in. Um, if not, we'll find out and we'll uh, All right, so do what we have to do. Should I assume then that when we look down for hospital medical insurance, when we talked about the amount there, that that's why that decreased? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, next one I have is on page 34. <coughs> but that's basically, there was the money, and then it's nothing. Yeah. And as I recall, in the, when we had the meeting, um, we were saying that would be 19,500. So I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm just saying, um, did we? Is there something else that we eliminated in this? The that cover I sheet about? The cover sheet combined that with zoning. Yeah. Uh huh? It got combined with zoning. If you read your cover page. The fire inspector. Fire codes yeah. and zoning 
We're putting it together under one department. Okay, so we're no longer putting it in this one. That's right. Because that's why that's why we didn't do it because um, I know we reduced it. There's nothing there. When you look to the far right, it says preliminary. There's nothing there. Exactly. Because of the all of those expenses associated with fire inspection are going over to the zoning uh, okay. department. And when I, the only reason I'm bringing it up is when we went through the budget the first time, um, we, we, had, we had left it there. Yeah. I, well, I made a note that we had put it yeah. in. Well, one of the things that has evolved also in the 11th hour is the effort to try and get the budget to reflect current standards for <coughs> municipal fiscal reporting and budgeting and uh, so on and so forth. And, uh, and, and you know, we'll, uh, I guess Pat's officially on today, if you, you have any, any sense of that, but there are lines that we need to bring together uh, and codes that need to be changed. And Diane was having some trouble with, you know, how to <coughs> budget that and how to bring them together like and to reflect the whole budget. Way it's set up, but that's another an story. Well, she's following the uniform codes that the state has. Uh, yeah, we have to follow those. I know. Right. So really, that's why we have to do it this way. Well, the fire prevention really wasn't an accurate description of what you guys were, were doing, so that's okay. why it was moved over to the uh, zoning and planning department. Our zoning department was it? Over to zoning. Zoning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Which actually makes the budget easier for you. Less lines. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at that. Page 38. Um, there's another one where we look at the 2012 actual amounts. We'll look at the um, previous amount from 2011, the budgeted amounts, and we see that it's way over, and yet we went and, and we budgeted less. Is uh, this particular one? I mean, this is for highway, uh, and, and I know it's a part time. I know they have to pull somebody from somewhere else. If we well, have no one to pull, or what? Alex, Alex was hired because you're going to be short a person in twelve, and uh, I'm looking to see if she had a note on the highway on her summary sheet. <coughs> yes, yeah, increase in highway superintendent health insurance, insurance thirty-five hundred. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is. Uh, if this particular person was was a floater before. Um, it was a person that had dual responsibility, working perhaps in the clerk's office and then going over there or somewhere else. And then we had the floater going into mm -hmm. the, the highway because highway didn't have anybody. Uh, no, the floater didn't do that. Well, somebody. Stephanie did that. Stephanie yeah. did that. She's okay. the secretarial staff for the highway department. All right. So, and that was not full time. That was just in there. That's part of her yeah, other duties. Part. So that, so since this is decreased, what, is that being picked up by someone else? Well, the insurance is increased. I'm looking at the pay on on the second line down on page 38. Okay. What line are you looking at? It's the second line. Is it page clerk typist. It says yes. Yeah, I think that's what, yeah. This must say clerk down clerk. nine dollars. I don't know why. Well, yes, it's, that's down nine dollars. But look at the from actual 12. amount from yeah. from. Yeah. I mean, this is not a realistic budget if you're spending $5,000 well, you are budgeting the 4000 and you're not going to... Yeah. Uh, and, and again, Tom, I can't answer the question with that degree of specificity, but one of the things that happened in 12 that was very unique was an enormous amount of time by Stephanie because of the FEMA reports. Right. She's the one that gathered the data, pulled it okay. in, uh, produced the reports uh, that have actually gone quite well. And so that's why we need to on the highway. Well, I'm, I, again, I'm, it would be logical if that was the reason. I can't preliminary, say. I think Bernie hit it, it, it on the head. Preliminary is $10 less than what the 2012 budget amount was. The actual <coughs> 2012 expenditure was higher for just the reason you talked about. Probably is. The added time that Stephanie spent. Okay. I mean, I, I understand your concerns, uh, multi-million dollar budget, multiple pages, lines. It's easy to get a keystroke in there where you didn't mean to. Uh, and that's why you get a lot of eyeballs on it, you know? I can't say that hasn't happened anywhere, but 
That's also one of the reasons you have amendments along the way. One of the reasons, not the reason. All right, so in this particular case, is this, is this, is this an addition uh, on, under the hospital for another um, part of a uh, pain part of hers? The highway superintendent's health insurance increased the uh, cover sheet 3500 Okay, so that's that's for all the people. <clears throat> okay. That's for page 50. I think they, yeah, they corrected the ones that we were wrong for on this one. But, uh, <clears throat> um, was it, was there a, uh, there had been discussion about um, dis public display panels for, um, those were granted. We've oh, got another that's grant. Okay, oh, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I thought, but yeah. I just want to make sure. I know we, we we've got a grant for one uh, down on uh, the Morrisonville Bridge. Uh, because of a space problem, it may go on the Skyler Falls side, but that's another story. Okay. But yeah. those are all grant funds. Yeah. All right. And the other one's this kind of problem. Now, 53. Well, I think I know. Not decided that this came from the other place. But in the, um, it says uh, hospital medical insurance. Now, uh, when you look at the um, overview with the, the things it says for this particular one for zoning, I think it's on here, so I can't uh, have to find it here. Um, zoning increase $2,000, okay? Um, it says zoning uh, health increase $2,000. But you also brought over the fire section, which right. could accommodate for a big part which of Which was 19000 So Is that correct? Uh, you so said faster than I can look it up. All right, so 19000 and an increase 2000 is 21. Okay, so that's where we get the 40, because that's I thought that was like. quite a big jump. It's when she <laughs> said it only goes 10000 and it doesn't say anything about the other 19000 around The round number is 18 and 21 is 39. And yeah, so. it's close enough, but... Um, but it didn't say anything on this sheet about moving, you know, that much, the 19,500. So I, that's why I didn't. Uh, back on the front, when you're in your zoning officer uh, amounts go up as much as they go up from the tentative of 31 to 63. That's the, that's the, that's putting in the people that were previously in the fire. Yeah, okay. Unit. Okay. So so it just wasn't it wasn't listed on the cover sheet that's all. Okay. So I, I got it. Because I know we did talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what's in I got fifty five marked, but I don't know what fifty five marked. Okay, so that one was for planning, and that's because you, of those two changes that you mentioned that we had a, we, we hired a new person, plus we get a person who changed a family from individual, and that's why that went up as much on the medical coverage. Okay. So that's that one. We answered that question on the previous one, that's why I'm clicking that. Given the increases in, uh, in all the things we know, retirement, health care, yada, yada, uh, the, the difference between the uh, preliminary or summary sheet uh, and the tentative is actually uh, down uh, measurably. Um, and uh, go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. And then the other last one I had was on the, on the general fund, um, when you look on page 62, it, it says um, tentative uh, 3712, and then preliminary 3675. Mm -hmm. And and the, the I know this, this is the 
going, we were looking at the tentative before, and it was 6,700. So, um, or 6 million, I'm sorry, 6 million, 700,000. So, is that a, a mistake, or was that uh, our earlier mistake? It couldn't have changed that much. I don't think. Are you talking about uh, general, total general? Total general. Well, actually, I don't know that this is total general because there's nothing written on the left. It just says account description, account number, and it says page 62, which I'm looking at. These are three pages apart, so this, I'm, I was thinking this is supposed to match up with the uh, total general fund. Where, where did you see a six million town? In, the, in the, the budget that we worked on originally. Okay. I forgot your pages were different on the this is what I'm talking about. So this is what this is one I have in the joint. Okay. Um general fund revenues were uh two million nine eighty eight. Now, maybe it's just not labeled correctly. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Pull, yeah, it's tough to pull an individual sheet. I'm, I'm going by well, no, this. I, I, but I'm going by the pages. Okay. I'm going by page by page here. But this is... And the, this is way different than... This is the different. preliminary budget. The, yeah, you know, and the amounts cover. That, that sheet is not the brother of this sheet. It isn't. Okay, that's what I thought. This, this is there's something wrong. Well, I, I know that, that's as far as she got on Friday. So, you know, the rest of it... Um, the, the rest of it, uh, maybe that was a different mistake. Yeah, or like what that. you. <clears throat> but anyway, I thought that was wrong. Yep, what you've got now as we work on a final budget, you've met with the department heads, and that would be the, the cover sheet dated November 5, the summer yeah, sheet. Yeah. And then behind that, you have the um, breakout as we had in the tentative and preliminary with these adjustments. And we continue to bat the ball back and forth, uh, trying to get to a final budget, which is the ultimate goal. Um, I mean, you brought up some good questions. We'll go over those tomorrow as well. Um, if you looked at the cover sheet, I think that's very important. Um, some of these are simply corrections as we go through. We see something's in the wrong line, whatever. But uh, others are uh, changes based on the meetings and needs, uh, people changing health plans, et cetera. Um, we had agreed to put in 5,000 for complete streets. Well, that's so in that there. was added. That, that, I, I, I basically did check all these things. Right, but, but what I'm saying is, is the summary sheet, if, if everyone is in agreement with that, that's well, the direction we're going. I agree. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that part. Right. All I'm just saying is sometimes this doesn't agree. Well, and, and right now it doesn't have to 100%. We're no, I know evolving that. the final budget, and, and that's what we'll look at. But it's the, the lines are based on the changes in the summary. And that's where I'm saying things like uh, we took the flow route. Um, it, it's it's not a it's not as much of an increase. Um, uh, we we still had a lot of discussion. I look forward to having those discussions in the next uh, coming hours. I almost need to say hours as much as days. We don't have a lot of time. As far as how to project revenue with sales tax. Um, and I'd like to say there are different schools of thought. Maybe I'm the only one with a school of thought. Maybe there's a correct way to do it. I am not at all supportive of putting into our budget exactly what the county projects. I, th I think that's suicidal. Um, well, and we I, haven't done that in the past. We've been careful. Well, we, we have, but... Uh, Accountants would want us to put that in because a interpretation could be that we aren't budgeting anticipated revenue correctly. Uh, the counties hit it pretty well. I, I think in recent years they might have missed it twice. Since I've been here, they missed it once. For the town of Plattsburgh, it wasn't as big a problem. Some of the smaller municipalities 
yeah, uh, Ellenberg, uh, Dana Moore, Moore's. They get theirs in advance based on the projection. The projection doesn't come in. Guess what they have to do? They had all these FEMA-related issues and a lot of expenses. And then they had to come up with sales tax. They got an advance that was short of what the real uh, sales tax numbers looked like. That was a nightmare for them. In our case, because we didn't budget at 100% of projection, and we got it as it is collected during the year, we could adjust. We did. Uh, uh, Pat, finance manager today. You weren't Friday, you are today. <laughs> um, I mean, we need to talk about that, and I think we need to talk about it because we need to do the right thing, but... Um, it's number one on the agenda tomorrow morning. So. It, yeah, it, it, it makes, I mean, it genuinely makes me nervous. When I came here, Diane was pretty proud that if she had to err and project, she was going to err and project incoming revenue low, expenses high. If highway department said next year, I think we've got to buy a new truck. It's two hundred thousand dollars. Well, that was two hundred thousand in the year we looked at it. Nothing goes down. You better put two fifty for next year because guess what? You won't be able to get your truck. Uh, we might not buy it. The mechanics keep the old one going. Um, we might be able to go out to a bid and find it didn't go up that much. But it, it gives you a little bit of play during the year because guess what? Something's going to break that you didn't know it was going to break. You're going to have a need. Uh, uh, you, you're going to have uh, issues with uh, challenges to our assessments. You're going to be hiring attorneys. Um, you, you don't want to budget it to the skin. Some places do, but I don't think we should. Um, now, that's my philosophy. We obviously need to uh, develop a budget that's uh, you know, being done correctly. And I don't think we've done it incorrectly, but. Um, what I need to go back to Diane with is having reviewed, we'll certainly look at uh, the questions that came up tonight, having reviewed the summary sheets. And any time you get, and I know you, People are just getting this. Nothing I can do about that. Um, but as soon as you can, you need to uh, look at any concerns and uh, bring that to our attention because we have to produce a final budget. I think we're getting there. Um, and uh, I mean, what are there, 15 bullets or so of changes? That's not bad. It tells me that uh, department heads weren't uh, bringing in some Santa Claus wish list, and um, you know we, we 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 got off to a good start. Uh, we cut some big things, as you know. The biggest one on this adjustment sheet was the floater wage and fringe, sixty-two thousand dollars cut. Um, would it be good to have the person? Could we use it? Probably, but I think for next year we try without it. Uh, and the big thing with that, remember, we have a staff person now that's worked in all the office offices. She's very efficient. And this is if they can bring a little more work out of her. And I hope she doesn't watch this tape because she'll be waiting for me. <laughs> uh, anyone have any other questions on the uh, <clears throat> changes as indicated? So, um, and I got a, a little confused uh, last Thursday night as we were discussing this process. Um, the final budget is up to be passed uh, next Monday, the 19th. Um, you already accepted a, pr a preliminary, which was the tentative, but, you know, for lack of a better word, morphed into that. But. Um, we, we need to do a little bit of adjustment, I think, with uh, the schedule, but I still think, and, and I hope everyone here supports, next year we do the same. Um, I, I do think it's better to listen before you make a preliminary budget. When I spoke to the Association of Towns Attorneys, they indicated a lot of municipalities do that. And then, you know, you, you, you got the crunch going to that uh, less than two weeks, a little over a week, to uh, make the changes and get your final budget. Okay. But again, I go back. Uh, we're, we're able to get this done the way we need to get this done because we've had we've had cooperation of our department heads. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
and you know, uh, hopefully there aren't any adjustments along the way. Uh, we will continue to work with them. So, uh, as Rick, when, when you take the, um, the, the, the tape down to the station, uh, uh, you take it the way we took it here, right? It's, it's intact. Okay. Yeah. The other thing, um, just a footnote, I guess, uh, I, I believe 2013 is the last year of a three-year agreement with our uh, employees, uh, the Teamsters Union and whatnot. So, Negotiation next year? We'll, we'll be we'll negotiating be next year, and, and I hope we can encourage everyone to um, sit down early so we've got plenty of time. Um, well, we should take our notes from the last time and see where we went and what we yeah. were looking to do. There, yeah, there are, there are a number of things that have come up, and some of it's just confusing language still. In the agreement, that really uh, we, we've done better, but some of that still needs to be cleaned up. Um, but we'll uh, we'll be uh, proceeding with that shortly. Number three, townwide lighting district rates. So here's another interesting topic. Um, <coughs> everybody got what they needed there. Some of this, as I said, I was uh, duplicating uh, today. Some of it producing uh, the other day. Um, I just want to be sure you've got copies of what you need. If you don't, let me know. Uh, Brian came in Friday afternoon um, and came up with the assessed values that I believe we needed. Uh, Paul, this has kind of been your baby for a while. I don't know if you have any time to work with those numbers. I did. Um, I looked at, I think Jerry's request was to try and go five cents at townwide and then an additional uh, assessment for anybody who was actually in a lighting district and working with those numbers. I'm really comfortable, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable at 13, 13 cents for anybody who's in a district. Um, we could probably, Diane would probably, if, if to match Diane's number, you'd have to go to 15 and a half cents. <coughs> with the five, Tom White. And that's including the five, right. Okay. Um, my, I, I guess to, if you want to err on the side of caution, we could probably go to 14 cents and might make Diane comfortable and, and I would be comfortable and, and, and watch it for a year. And you know, if the fund balance grows back as quickly as I anticipate it is, you can cut the rate when you get to a comfortable level. Now, do you have a number of what 14 does? Yes, $148,789 and 61 Could you repeat that? $148,789 and 61 cents. And do you have a number for what 5 cents does? Uh, that's, that's the, oh, I'm sorry, that's the total of... The two? The two together, yes. I don't know if I actually wrote it down that the two would be it separately. I don't think I did. Okay. I think we could live, like I said, at 13, but basically adding, adding 14 penny, and 5. Adding a penny to the taxable, to, to the tax rate of those who are in a district basically adds $10,000 in revenue. It's, it's so close. It's $10,100 for one. So. Does it, um, have we been able to delineate where we would have the district? We. Came, we, the supervisor and I, along with Phil Von Bargen and Trevor, formulated a map. So you do have we do, we do have a we do have a map. We went parcel by parcel. The map that we had generated some interesting things. I always like to mention um, one of my favorite, uh, the corner where I used to live on Road Three. Uh, I think it's Vintage Estates. Is yeah, the new cool. road on that corner? You've got a number of new homes in there. Street lights all the way up the road. Nobody ever paid a nickel on value of that. They were never put in a district. Um, uh, and then we had some other interesting ones such as the ferry dock. Mm -hmm. And I mean that absolutely should be in a district. There's public lighting there. And you know as assessed value well, they, they get a business benefit and there's a community benefit and a, a traveler benefit. But where I'm going with this statement, I wish that all of you uh, had been able to see uh, the answers to the questions happened pretty quickly as we pulled out properties that we didn't know 
where they might go, what they were, <clears throat> found properties that were basically carved little chunks of land that had been uh, isolated as a result of a ramp on the interstate. And there it is. Somebody, you know, I'm sure there were some deals made, but you know, there, there's a wedge of property that has no value. It's landlocked. It's uh, adjacent to a ramp. Uh, we were able to see those using the GIS mapping, being able to pull those layers in, actually using satellite uh, images. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, <coughs> percent accurate, absolutely not, but probably uh, 98, 99 percent. Um, and, and, you know, I, I feel bad for, for some of you. You're in, you do your committee things and so on. It's different than being here day after day after day. When a question comes up and you go into a department, you see the use of a piece of technology, the software, that resolves an answer very quickly, it resolves it correctly, and in many cases can eliminate potential lawsuits and errors, not to mention, you know, so we're, we're real it's great. Are comfortable with this two tiered system now? Uh, in terms well, of where, where we're going to be charging? The board in the last work session, uh, the, the decision was the two tier. Um, Paul has generated, uh, is that the levy we were looking for, Paul? One for yeah, well, that's, that's what I was going to get to. Diane is looking to raise 174000 And as I told you, that was about $40,000 more than. And, and she'll admit that she estimated at 15 cents, she estimated high. Um, that number can be attained at 148. <coughs> and we still have a surplus in there. Correct. Things that's, happen. That's eating, I mean, it's eating up some of the surplus for the first four years, and then, and then you'd be putting that surplus back at a rate to be determined by the board sitting there, get to a surplus that you're comfortable with. And okay, just, uh, just to check for understanding, at the five cents town wide, fourteen cents, uh, we'll call it in district. That generates one forty eight seven eighty nine. We believe, correct. And that's what we're going to go with. Is everybody in agreement with that to start? We don't have to answer that question this budget. So, so it's technically by Brian's calculation, five cents town wide and nine cents in the other district. Yeah, and and uh, again, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, we took your <coughs> numbers and your work, and as we began the tentative budget, I agree with Diane. I'm, I'm getting nervous now. I'd rather not come up short. And and the highest rate of 14 cents, nobody paid that low before, did they? 19. 19 was the lowest. Yeah. So everybody saves. Um, and, and I know there was some discussion uh, the other night. I don't think I want to go to there to there any great length unless you all want to. But I have spoken uh, with Art. I spoke with Art again today. I let him know that... Uh, you know, the, the concerns needed to be uh, considered and reviewed. Um, he wasn't uncomfortable. He assured me that uh, where we're working, we're not near high voltage. Uh, there'd obviously be some training, but right. he was very comfortable still with the, uh, the plan. And I know when we met with the union, the town of the union, they didn't express any concern with their uh, employees. I mean, it goes with Part, part of it goes is that we own some of the town. We own 300 lights now. It's not like we're not out there doing what we're now going to do town wide. We are, we're out there doing some of it now. So. Anybody have any other questions, comments concerning the lighting district rates? Well, uh, we'll have Diane review these. I was wondering, you know, which was brought up in the, in the public hearing was the uh, New York State uh, electric gas uh, classification. Under provision in paragraph 1B, it states, and they put that in here. Uh, something you can check on that to see if they're, if they have these uh, provisions that uh, would uh, mean that we could not install these things. We're all set with NYSIG. We've completed yeah. the service pull agreement, attachment pull agreements. attachment yeah. agreement, and um, I have for you Monday the. Um, purchase agreement as well. I think we've uh, finalized that. We have the language. Uh, they also worked out for me. Uh, our budget officer will be very excited. Uh, they did the spreadsheet on the inventory and put in the date of the hardware. So we're able to know um, how to put this into our fixed assets and there's some of it is just off, off the radar. That will be a huge help for us. Well, have you, have you read what that? specific question do you have for have you Have you read the whole agreement? Yes, of course. Do you know what the, the New York State Electric and Gas 
the rules are and stuff? I don't know. I don't know what all that. I read the agreement and I made my suggestions to Brian. They have approved what we're doing, Tom. If, I mean, if that's the ultimate concern, NYSIG has approved and they haven't discouraged Are you, are you concerned that NYSIG has entered into a contract they don't have authority for? Um, I'm, I'm always concerned about, you know, if there's, there's some you know, contract that you didn't look at or we didn't uh, realize uh, that was there, and it changes the changes the uh, actual agreement when you know you're not aware of it. Um, so if this is something that we've already checked, then that's fine. Well, I've read the entire agreement. The like I said, I made some suggestions to Bernie. I don't think Nysig um, wanted to go with all our suggestions, but uh, um, and anyways, we we have. But I, I don't. There's no doubt in my mind that Nysig has the authority to enter into the agreement. Okay, any other questions on the rates with the town wide? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, good. Um, next item on the agenda is the mainline sewer camera. Now it's uh, it's it's getting pretty close to decision time again. Did I don't think it did yet. I asked Scott, and again, this was done Friday because uh, just the way the timeliness of this proceeded. Um, I asked him to give me a very succinct written report with consideration of many questions that have surfaced oh, yeah, that. as to uh, why we should spend uh, this kind of money on a camera. Uh, and he and I really have spent some time. Um, you've got it. You can read it. Um, I don't know why. We only had one bid submitted, but we did. Uh, there were questions, uh, and he and I talked again. I think there's something in here about what we currently have. It, it's like a lot of things. We've also currently got some computers in the basement that need to find their way to the dump, as did two or three that I once owned because... They just don't do the job anymore. Um, I, I, the analogy I came up with, and I, I shared this with one of you, and uh, it may or may not be a good analogy, but I, I like to try and understand things, and analogies help me. Uh, in my home, if my roof needed to be repaired, I probably should have done it a year or two before. This year, it's got to be done. I'm going to make a number of it. It's a $15,000 bill. I don't have 15000 so I'm going to have to now process, what do we do? You know, I'm going to have to generate some more money by some extra work over time, uh, sell something, uh, get a home equity loan, uh, get a loan, borrow the money, uh, get my brother-in-laws together, just buy the materials, and we're going up on the roof and do it ourselves. I have to have a solution, but it's, it's a large number. If in that same time frame, the car also is a little beyond the oil change. Well, that's only 40 bucks. You know, my wife might very well say, Bernie, yeah, come on, let's put that 40 toward the roof. It's logical. But it's kind of illogical not to change the oil. There are other things we still have to spend. And, and, and Scott and I had that conversation a bit also. You know, he, and, and you'll see his justification, he's quite convincing that this is a very uh, proactive decision. Hey, if we don't buy it, you know what? Life goes on. We got through this year without it. But if you have it, there are situations in time when not only can they be keeping up so we don't have other problems, they can resolve current problems more quickly by knowing exactly what they're dealing with. They're going to save time by, you know, kind of exploratory, if you will, um, uh, you know, digging. Um, and, and I got down uh, to the bottom line of, we have an engineer who we pay well. He's quite well trained. He knows his job quite well. He, he impressed me within a week of you know, how he took ownership of that department. And he's come and light up. He's the guy that knows, you got, Tom, you've been all over it as part of that committee. You've got a lot of work to do 
in water soup. <coughs> and he still thinks this is a smart purchase. Um, the other thing I'd add to that is I did get an, uh, a note from Gerard who, again, regretted he couldn't be here. I, I kind of regret it also. I, I'd sure rather him sitting here than on his back in a hospital bed. Um, but he had looked over Scott's comments also, and he felt he justified the request adequately. Uh, the list of reasons to move forward uh, with the award makes me lean more towards support. Um, it's a tough one. Um, well, the, the guy's the, doing his job. The old, the old things are, they need a lot of money in repairs. That's antiquated technology. You can't, you can't service them. They, they don't no longer service that technology. So uh, you did, we have very limited use anyway. Even if you, we spend all the money to repair them, and so you, you spend a, a third of what you're going to spend on the, on the new one to, to repair this and get it up to date. And what have you got? You can't you can't uh, integrate it with the, the current system of technology that we have in order to, to put the things in. If we get this other one, we can. It'll 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 be. I'm sure it'll be used by other departments as well as other municipalities mm -hmm. as we go yeah, along. Yeah, and that's something that came, I, I don't know from where, the idea that we wouldn't. I mean, I'm, I'm very quick to say, you know, we're not just saying, yeah, boys, you know, go take this $150,000 piece of equipment and make sure you clean it up before you bring it back. You don't do that. you got to have a plan. you got to know who's doing what. Um, when we hired somebody to come out here and do it, we paid them, I don't remember what we did, uh, I want to say it was 60000 60, We still had to have a crew there going with them and guiding them and gathering the information. We still tied some of our people up. Um, if another municipality needed this, we clearly would share it. We just need to come up with, how does that work? It's it's more complex than a chainsaw, this, you know, sharpen it, break it back. This type of equipment you would, you, you would you know, your, your people go with it. That's right. The and there has to be a rate, and there's going to be a fee. Particularly at the, at the rate of failure. Of our infrastructure, yeah, because of its yeah. age. I don't know if you all picked up. We need up. to know where that I, is. I, I'd uh, like to talk to this if yeah. I could for a minute. Uh, this is the first time I'd seen the number. Uh, I wasn't here Friday and I wasn't here today, uh, so I'm not blaming anybody for that. This is the first time I've seen the number. Uh, what I'm not comfortable about at all is that kind of an expenditure and only one better. Mm -hmm. What I would like to see us do is to go back to the department and say, we'd like to see you rebid this, mm -hmm. and maybe this time you get on the internet and you find some of the other manufacturers and you send that information to them. But what we did, that we sent four, four bids out and got one back. Go figure, you know, it's a sale. Why didn't they, I don't know? They were the only bidder. How far do these bids go, generally where they go? Rochester, uh, there was one out of the area, I think New Jersey or something, mm -hmm. uh, on Cliff, and uh, I want to say Vermont, I think. Was how, there any, um, how far would it be advertised though? How, how, what, what, what kind of area? Uh, because it went on the internet. Oh, it did go on the internet. Yeah, yeah. It was on the uh, Dodge report. <coughs> oh, good. So, that's stuff I, I wouldn't know. Did yeah. Scott have any um, reason why nobody else would want to bid? No, that, that was the only company that bid out of all. But I mean, did the other companies make this type of camera? Yeah. But it, they never sent anything back. This was the only company that returned anything back to us that, that, that bid on it. The other, the other three never sent anything back. back. I don't think unless you want to widen the specifications or something. Well, that was going to be my, my question, is were the specifications broad enough that yeah. they weren't proprietary where only one person could bid? <laughs> if that happened, then that's probably why. If we were trying to it tailor be, it see, to get this grain, then we could potentially contact these other three outfits and ask them, how come you didn't submit a bid? And then that may open a door for us to take a fresh look at this. But I'm not comfortable bidding uh, you know, it, it isn't like we've standardized equipment or whatever. I, you know, I'm not comfortable 
uh, having an effect on a bid where we only got one quote? A lot of interesting things. I mean, the numbers just get huge. Uh, Jim and I have talked a couple of times. I never realized the cost of a snowplow. Yeah. We throw a quarter of a million dollars in a snowplow. Mm -hmm. And then add to that, they get, I don't know, five, six miles a gallon and they're loaded up out there working, some days less. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, I never realized when I went through this with Scott, we have 33 miles of wastewater infrastructure. And, and you often talk about the liability versus the asset. Uh, you know, I, 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 one of my questions of Scott was, so we're going to assign somebody to be, you know, driving around all day in the truck, take pictures of, uh, of the plumbing, you know, is this uh, what's going to take place? And I said, that, that can't happen. Uh, but there are times when you pull it in because of, uh, a repair, a lateral problem, a discharge <coughs> violation, so on. I mean, he wrote it for you. Uh, I, I personally wouldn't think that, that uh, Scott would, put, would go to the length of uh, putting the proprietary uh, bid specifications in. I, I, can't, I don't see that. No, I, I don't think so either. I, I, I mean, I've got the notes. They're good questions. Um, the bid was opened Friday or Thursday? Uh, no. that? Well, well, the day you oh, had the meeting yeah. with those other people, I, can't remember, remember what day that I came and got stopped. But uh, <coughs> we, we haven't had time to really go through it. Uh, but I still, um, I wanted uh, to bring that to everybody's attention. So generally what we're saying is we want to get some more information, um, you know, talk about uh, rebidding. It sounds like he did try to get out there. Uh, there I'm going to guess there aren't a <coughs> lot of companies that produce uh, an item mm -hmm. like this. Uh, going in the Dodge report, because um, well, the lady that's, called that's me back as the, the following day to find out what the the bid, the high bid was, and I said we only had one bid now of the the whole thing. It was, Did she have any comments to that? Was she surprised? No, I just, she just wanted to know the figures hmm. onto it, and that was it. And Dodge report goes to everybody it goes to the whole yeah, United States. Across the country, yeah. I guess so. I don't know. But we'll get uh, we'll get some response from him. Um, we haven't drafted a, a resolution to purchase yet. <coughs> but we got to make a decision. That's the name of the game. You know, we we make decisions. Um, photocopy and service contract agreement renewal. It's decision time again. Um, we have been dragging our feet more because. <coughs> <clears throat> More because the, the photocopiers, printers were just not getting to the top of my agenda uh, for a few months. We have uh, been talking with uh, providers that we've, we've used um, and <coughs> narrowed down to uh, SimQuest and LockRose, uh, listened to a number of presentations. It's sort of like if you want to go out and buy a camera, you know, I mean, everybody's got the best camera and, you know, everybody's got some of the same things and everybody's got one thing they have, nobody else does, and eventually someone says, well, I like the way that one looks. This one's a little lighter. They don't have it in red. You know, what do you do? Uh, we really were pulling the hair out of our head on this because of the, the variables. And two things happened, very important things. Um, one of the things we did is say, you just got to give us a written proposal. We need to compare apples with apples. I don't want to hear why your product's better and you know you're going to give us a little better deal on this machine. And, um, so we were able to do that. And the other thing that happened that's become, well, it's got a sense of urgency. NYSERDA, Marty you dealt with NYSERDA, got some grant money back for us, had uh, put in a little over a million dollars to pay up to 75% of uh, copiers that were purchased by schools and municipalities. Needless to say, there's been a scramble with schools and municipalities. Ours are aged. I think, I don't know, don't quote me. I, 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 for some reason, I think the one in the mailroom has over a million copies on it. I mean, they'll do a million. It's sort of, you know, uh, you can get a little more mileage. But there's also a point. Look at the copies I made for you this afternoon. And uh, I've used copiers for a good number of years. Um, they're better. Um, they're more efficient. 
we need to reduce the cost of both ink and uh, paper where we can, uh, but we still have to copy things. I've been monitoring the NYSERDA money, and their million last call was down to a little over 600,000. NYSERDA has basically <coughs> said, and for qualifying equipment, this equipment will qualify. If I let them know that we're going to purchase, I don't have to have purchased, they will encumber reimbursement funds for us and preserve our piece of the pie until they get our actual purchase agreements and then they'll reimburse 75%. Yep. Uh, we've, we've been leasing and again, it's the same argument to lease, to own, whatever it is, to rent, to build. Um, when you're getting 75% back, it's time to buy. And um, I don't have, did I give you copy? Do we throw copies in your packets? Probably no. not. This is, this is uh, as I said, kind of breaking <coughs> stuff again from when we last met Thursday. Um, the bottom line, I haven't spoken with either provider. Um, and I don't believe this is an appropriate item because we're not negotiating going to an executive session or anything. Um, Apples for Apples, comparing the equipment and service agreements, uh, SimQuest has given us the lower cost that would uh, provide uh, two large black and white copiers. We're going to try and push the black and white more. Uh, we need black and white uh, for the clerk, for a town court, and one large color copier in the mailing. What I'm wanting to do, and I've worked with both groups and they can both do it, is we're going to force people's decision making on printing to try and get away from desktops. Um, I've got one also. Um, I think I changed the ink on it once this year. Uh, if I'm doing a letter, it might come off there. It's a pretty high quality letter. It's just black and white. Um, if I'm making more than a copy, I network it to a large volume printer. Um, that's what we encourage people to do. On my computer, I can network to two or three different printers, depending on my needs. Um, some of the changes we made in technology and what people want, vendors want. Um, you know, we're, we're still getting you know, here's an electronic copy, the original hard copies in the mail, you'll get it tomorrow. And I'm starting to get, this will suffice as the original copy, as an authorized signature. It's electronic. Uh, companies want that as well. Um, with this setup, though, we will be able to embed messages to our staff, many, many of them that use printers, that will tell them where to print it. And that's where it'll be waiting. They'll have uh, key punch codes. You're probably familiar with this, Paul. So if they go to a high volume black and white copier, I can just keep sending my print stuff. And then when I'm ready, I go in, I put in my code, and it comes out. And that's important because there, there are security issues as well. Um, there may be something I'm printing that I don't want uh, Phil Von Bargain to see. So it goes in my mailbox until I go there, or Deborah goes, and we put in my code, and it comes out. Um, it, it also will enable us, and they'll come in and do some training to uh, help when we have a packet, we have a large volume of printing to do, uh, planning does, codes does, so we're not tripping over each other. I, I really think we can cut our costs, and on top of that, save 75%. Um, the low um, proposal, as I said, is with SimQuest. If I can, uh, and I don't know what else you want or need, I'll provide it. Um, there hasn't been time to do in advance, really. I, I'd like to, if that uh, is the direction we're going. I mean, we got to go somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's, the contracts are up first of the year. Where is SimQuest located? Um, I, they're, they're, they're a huge company. They have a base here. Lonnie Cleland, who had been with Lockrose as their rep, Lonnie's been servicing the town for a number of years. Um, I knew Lonnie ages ago as well. He's been in machines. Um, so they, they are here. They represent 
a number of months, we began looking at the whole IT thing, uh, which was huge, and we finally got to where just talk to me about printers and copiers, you know, because that's what we need. I thought I heard at the beginning where you talked with two providers. Yeah. I think we have to talk. We have to get information from three. How much money do we think? Um, we're looking at less than six hundred dollars a month. So that's seventy to hundred a year. Less than six or seven thousand mm -hmm. a year, and how long is the lease? Uh, the service lease is sixty months. That's thirty-five hundred, thirty-five thousand over a five-year period. I think you have to. Don't I don't. Wrong. Yeah, I, may, I. I may be wrong. I think. I think you need to check it though. I'll, I'll you double don't check do it. This and then have somebody yeah. scream in the foul. Yeah, we we had and for this service contract and I all the equipment is on state contract, mm -hmm. so we're not is dealing this? with. This is on state contract oh, equipment. Then you don't need to do it, right? Then you don't okay. Need to do it. Yeah. Um, and and uh, the equipment <coughs> does qualify for nice CERTA mm -hmm. uh, support. We've also run this through TJ uh, to get tech, you know, recommendations. And his recommendation was also SimQuest. Uh, apparently, the college has also gone that direction for a number of reasons. Um, I will double check that, but I believe because yeah, of the I state contract, we're fine. when you said state contract. You don't have to go out to bid if you go state contract. Right. They, all state or county contract. State, contract. Contract. state or county contract, you don't have to go out to bid on it. You don't have to go out to bid. We, we have to make sure, I think it does, it fits within our purchasing policy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We well, have to meet that, too. Right. But I will have a conversation with our finance department. Barring that, would uh, the assumption we cross the T and dot the I's on that, uh, I would assume you would want us to go to the lower I, I'm saying bidder, we asked for proposals, it wasn't really a bid. Uh, so we can uh, save those funds. We don't have those funds, we're back in a lease agreement. You don't want to buy. Yeah, when you say it's $700 a month, seven, $600? $576.65. <coughs> okay, that's a lease? That's the uh, service agreement. The service agreement? Mm -hmm. Okay, the machine itself. Um, that also will include the purchase. It's one. I think it's a lease. You buy it for dollar in the end. No, but I think you maybe need to talk to NYSERDA. I think NYSERDA is looking for you to buy this thing up front. Yes. And then they're going to give you 75%. Yeah. So you wouldn't end up with a lease that would include... We, we have a way to work that out with either company that it'll be bought up front and then we'll make the lease payments on the balance. Uh, on the balance. I need to get. Yeah. Now let me let me flush that out in more detail. We'll prioritize that tomorrow because we need to secure those nice sort of funds. I'm, I'm kind of spinning my wheels a little bit and I don't want to mislead anyone. So uh, you know what it's about. We'll get that information, clarify it, and get that out hopefully before the end of the week be able to uh, make a decision. Uh, but, but there's a, a way that the um, provider has worked out the funds with NYSERDA and with the service agreement so we're able to take care of the funds. I, I, I called NYSERDA also mm -hmm. to make sure I didn't just have a vendor that was telling me we had a good deal to get the business and uh, it wasn't the case. But I'll, I'll get a little more information on that. But we, we, we should make a decision we're going to lose that, that money. Um, I'll, I'll just get more information. The answers are all there. Uh, I, I didn't pull it together, and I don't want to be spending an awful lot of time uh, digging through it for you. Um, I'm going to make some assumptions that we're able to present that in the way that answers all the questions. So you might want to anticipate a resolution uh, as soon as this coming Monday. And if it doesn't look good, you can always take it. Um, next, we have a request from planning department. Um, this could have just been down in a draft resolution, but before, I wanted to make sure and uh, bring it to your attention. Um, Mr. Von Bargen has um, 
done his formal recommendation that we, um, it's a transfer, um, Tambor was hired as a typist and Michelle is a typist. It's just a horizontal <coughs> move. She would fill the vacant spot. Uh, his recommendation, uh, he and I have discussed it. I've discussed it with her. She really has done a great job. They're very, very pleased. She's very comfortable there. Um, anyone have any concerns, questions? No, no, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's very good. And, and Tom, that gets to some of the other stuff. I mean, she did do a good job. Uh, she was uh, a fast learner, and um, you just might get a little more than just uh, planning secretary typist. Uh, annual theater licenses. This is just a heads up uh, that these are due. And I put it in uh, here versus just a draft resolution. Um, as we get near the end of the year and the first of the year, we have a number of licenses that come around that we have to um, review applications and authorize. And I'm assuming no one has any concerns with either well, Ricky on or your on your letter, your letter references that the application needs to be returned or submitted. Uh, in order to be processed by the town board at their meeting, but you don't give anybody the meeting date. I'm wondering if we want to well, just, well, as long as they do it by the end of the year because their license expires the end of the year. I sent them out last year when we had that thing with Regal. So oh, yeah. I sent them out <coughs> a month and a half or an advance onto yeah. the thing, and then I sent them each Cumberland 12 and Regal cinemas both locally got them, plus the regional offices. I sent one to Peter Edelman and to that uh, lady that's the uh, tax accountant and that takes care of that that we had, uh, you know, questions with last year. So th th there's four renewals that went out to, to each different area. So this way, this year, I hope we don't have any backlog. On that. I, I think we'd be, we'd, we'd be serving them well if we gave them a date. Okay, we will not have a meeting on the 31st of December, I don't believe. No. Okay, and we don't want somebody doing that, and then we end up... I think the other, there was another letter that, that went out with it that uh, we had written that was included in this. Your letters are dated December 8th, Rick. Have they right. gone? Yeah, they're, they're already gone. Were they gone dated December 8th? Uh, should have been, been November 8th. Yeah, it should have been November 8th. That's my fault. But, but the other the other letter, well, actually, they went out in October. Uh, Have you heard back from either? No, not yet. Okay, you you need to put a sticky on your computer. Then I uh, you know I agree with Marty. It gets ugly toward the end, especially with corporate. Yeah, it's not as hard. With well, I, I included the that letter that we sent them last year mm -hmm. onto it and uh, revised the date onto it on that letter, but I didn't include it with this. That's my fault. But it would be wise, uh, first part of December, if you haven't heard anything, to right. send another and then let them know that yeah, if yeah. we don't have it in a timely fashion for our last well, that, meeting in December. That's what the other letter referenced uh, okay. to it, that at that time, because I referenced Stevie being able to go there and inspect it and do all of the stuff mm -hmm. that he has to, and Good. if they find something, there's not enough time to, to, to re remedy the situation. Do you have a number for Kerry Passmore? Yes, I do. The okay. phone number, yeah. yeah. I can call them both. A couple weeks, give them a call. Yeah. Because yeah. we know what will happen. No. Yeah, not like last year. Um, uh, I think you got to reduce speed. I think I'm back into yeah. the original agenda stuff. Uh, just a heads up, you can see the process uh, for the roads. Um, It'll be interesting with Durand, uh, given that the uh, town of Beekman Town has made a similar request. Mm -hmm. We'd like to think that will look forward. It, it is a process. It just none of it happens fast. Um, dial two one one. I brought this up at the department head meeting as well. Um, just not sure if you were aware of that. Uh, to share <coughs> with people, Rick. I don't know if you posted that. Mm -hmm. Do you have one of the color ones, Rick? Uh, yeah, I think Daniel had it. Okay, good. Uh, you know, services are always a challenge. Um, my number 10, just a reminder, if you haven't done so, we want uh, to know. Um, today I received a more formal electronic uh, 
uh, invitation to the development corporations. Um, I responded uh, that I would be going, and I also put a note that I'd be sharing it with uh, others and uh, encourage everyone to get back as soon as you can. A um, couple items on in the uh, resolutions, and the first one is not a draft. Um, I told uh, our director uh, youth services that I was going to share with counselors that I appropriately tongue lashed her because this had come to us tonight to be passed uh, in the work session. Uh, we should have had this uh, would have been nice even a couple weeks ago in a regular session. Uh, she kind of grinned and I said, Mel, I'm really tongue lashing. You know, come on, this is, you know, we don't really like to do it this way. Uh, but she gets busy and so on and so forth. So um, she does, uh, has requested, you have a letter from her, that we um, hire Caitlin Daniels, temporary on call, uh, Parks, we'll, we'll go to temporary on call, Parks and Rec. Uh, and uh, Michelle will continue to uh, be there if we need her as a sub. Uh, and I think most of you know, those, the programs are, are really tough sometimes uh, to find the people we need, especially uh, in the swim programs. It, it really is difficult, so she has it. With that said, if we can get Ricky to bring it to the table, see where it goes. Okay, whereas the supervisor received a letter dated October 29, 2012, from Melanie Defy, Youth Service and Recreation Director, requesting help with the family swim program. Whereas all the employment verification and eligibility requirements have been satisfied, and the Youth Service and Recreation Director recommends Caitlin Daniels to be appointed to this position. Now therefore be resolved that the supervisor hereby authorized to sign all necessary documents to hire Miss Daniels as a seasonal temporary help in the Park and Recreation Department. And that a certified copy of this resolution be given to the budget officer, youth director, Mr. Fiat, Cool Insurance, and Civil Service of Clinton County Department of Personnel for their final approval and filing. And a copy be placed in Miss Daniel's file, and it, and it be further noted that they have a motion. So moved. Mr. Wood, second. Second. Mr. Mannix, any discussion? Welcome. Tommy Wood. Yes. Mark Mannix. Yes. Paul Lemoyne. Yes. Bernie Bath. Yes. Carries. <coughs> also working our way down now the drafts a little a couple of them are worth just a little attention again such a, a short time frame here um, you've got uh, the highway department's report um, we continue to finalize our FEMA submissions we're in awful awful good shape um, and uh, you know we continue to wait for final funds um, I can't help but believe what's been going on in the southern part of the state is going to slow things down. But uh, Stephanie really did do a good job putting that together, and uh, we've had good results. Um, then we have the clerk's report. Mm -hmm. If there's questions or comments, if not, I'm going to continue going forward a little. Um, the draft and the adopted budget. Um, I think what Deborah did is pull up uh, the previous years. This will need to be um, amended because uh, the previous language about the preliminary budget uh, being adopted as the final it hasn't going to happen. It's been uh, amended pretty significantly. Um, so that simply is telling us, that's a, a placeholder, if you will, that uh, there'll be a resolution. So. We need to make those final decisions. Um, the re-levy is there. Um, we're still having a little bit of dialogue about that, but I think the, 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 the details, of course, are always important. The message is extremely important. We are taking past bills and we're re-levying them. Yeah. 
I know I've looked at those. I think it'd be wise for me to review some of those. Yep. Yeah. Right. There, there were, were some pretty small there, weren't there? Right. Well, there were some unusual. Ones. Well, one for one, not one for two. Yeah. Yep. I saw that. So I don't know. I mean, you can tell this is clearly a printout <coughs> of the water department's database, but uh, there are some questions, and yeah. um, we'll the, get our but finance. The, but the amount on it. the bottom of that page when it doesn't mm -hmm. come close to the amount that they say they're relevant. No, and and I don't know. So, if, you know, there are subtotals, right. different districts, and the whole nine yards. I mean, I assume mm -hmm. that. I have not analyzed this. Right. I've looked at it about as much as you have. Right. Um, but we'll get that part cleaned up and be ready. What we do need to do, if we're going to get this relevies, we got to get this passed. So if there are any uh, questions, uh, let me know. I know as I looked through it briefly today, I could see there, there were some things that I thought were interesting. The other thing that I'm told sometimes you know you're on there. No, I'm no, not. No, I'm oh. <laughs> uh, the other thing I've been told sometimes happens uh, with some folks is they have the idea that if they, you know, are uh, filing their taxes and uh, have deductions for county taxes, school taxes, that if I get these utility bills levied to my tax, it just kind of gets swept in. That's right. So that's between them and the IRS. That's so. right. But anyway, it's a pretty significant number, but if you recall a couple of years ago when that came to our attention, we were pretty concerned that the relevies weren't taking place. They have to. They have to. It's a lot of money. It's over $200,000. Um, so I will look at that a little more with the department. Right, yeah, because some of these, I mean... 0 0.02. <laughs> There, there's, I mean, that guy can just be sending a bill, no, I and I gotta believe he's gonna pay it. <laughs> well, if it is still there, there might be a reason why he hasn't too. I don't know, and, and it may be that particular uh, address has multiple accounts, and the computer just sweeps everything <coughs> open. I don't know. I, I saw that had the same questions, and <coughs> we were closed today, so I yeah, couldn't really right. get any answers. Uh, the completed assessment rolls is pretty much standard operating procedure. Uh, the narrow banding mandate, I think we've talked about that a bit. If you have any questions, let me know. I think Art's done his homework well on that. Um, the NYSIG streetlight agreement. Um, I, uh, the, the inventory is 89 pages. At least this one is. So, um, Bernie, I, I just think in, in that last resolution, we probably yep. should retitle that because what we're really winding up doing is standardizing our two way radio equipment. I mean, if we ever went to a resolution looking for that, that's really what it is. Yes. Because we're standardizing our radio equipment. We're doing it because the FCC said we have to do all the narrow banding, but that's not really the gist of what Art's doing in that resolution. Good, good point. Totally, <coughs> totally agree. And, and the title on the one uh, on the street lights uh, should also, in the title, use the word purchase. Um, we've, we've begun to learn finding things electronically is challenging. You try to think of the right trigger words that when you're searching, it'll bring it up. Of course, if you search the word purchase, you probably end up with God knows what. Um, one of the things in time, I'll go back to, to one of your concerns. It, it served us pretty well so far. We've done a lot of homework to get here. Um, before it gets signed, we're going to cross the final T and dot the final I again as far as reviewing the agreement and so on. Um, uh, I've had a number of conversations with uh, Dave and um, he, he's been really quite good to work with. And one of my last ones was the uh, uh, coming up with the construction year on the items. I mean, I'm just thumbing these. I see 1969, 1988, 67, um, 91. Um, we've been paying rent having stuff that's been around a while. How about these three? 1954. Yeah, so, uh, I, you know, the, I, I said it one night, the easy thing is to do nothing. Um, we've taken a look at this. We've talked about this, my God, for hours and hours and hours uh, to come up with a plan that looks like it would be better for the town going forward. Um, 
based on the research, I think it will be. But we'll 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 review everything, okay? But that that needs to be there. We're ready to go, I believe. Uh, the resignation of Dennis uh, Seymour, which you know triggered the hiring of uh, Alex because um, his accruals. Um, there were a couple questions on that as well, and I will work through those in the next day or two. Um, Dennis has had a good long career. I don't remember; it was over 30 years, I believe. Yeah, 30 years of service, so he's been a good, been a good employee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's probably going to take a while to get in the computer, too. But we'll, we'll whole family. Uh, then you have codes and zoning. Um, the, the level of activity. Uh, we had a very exciting meeting last Thursday or Friday. Uh, another project that was exciting about it was this project came to us because they looked at the market and they've identified the town of Plattsburgh as a place where they want to make an investment, uh, which is good. It keeps our tax base up and the cost of fund down. Um, I'm finding a couple items that I don't know if my notes just indicated you didn't have it. But this looks like it may even be a better copy for you. They're not going to do me any good. Um, I'm going to guess these were here because Deborah didn't get it to you earlier. Um, and I will. Uh, uh, as I said, I spoke with Gerard uh, late this afternoon, and um, his idea was in a couple of days he's going to be able to start coming in. I said, well, I, I hope you can. But um, I, I also told him he's, he's got to go slow. And I, I really don't Not expect to see him for what? another level of he's, he's had a tough time. Anyone have anything else for the evening? Okay, then I'm going to, we will stand adjourned at 8.05.